This video looks at the idea of intrinsic or absolute differentiation of a vector or a tensor along a given curve in curved space. So we have some vector field V of X and it might be defined over all of the manifold or a subspace of the manifold or maybe just along some curve. An example of a vector that's defined along a curve is the um, velocity 4 vector of a massive particle along its world line in space-time. And that curve is parameterized in terms of the proper time of the particle as measured by the particle, uh, x of tau, and that's given the components of the curve uh, here and the basis vectors here. So we've got some curve on a manifold specified by x of lambda, um, as we were just looking at x of tau, the proper time. This one's x of lambda, here are the components of the basis vectors and along some arbitrary vector field, along with an arbitrary vector field given by V of lambda, so the components of the vector are parameterized using lambda. All right, the question here is how does this vector change with respect to the parameter lambda along this curve? So let's just have a look at a picture first off of the situation to help motivate the discussion. So here's our manifold. These are the coordinate lines marked in, in purpley red color and also marked here, x1, x2. Um, the parameter is lambda. Here's our curve on the manifold. All right. And we're interested in how a vector field changes along this curve. So let's express the vector components in terms of the parameter lambda. The basis vectors themselves are by definition the derivatives of the coordinate lines. They are tangent to the coordinate lines. And so they're defined throughout the manifold or some section of the manifold. They're related to the coordinates used to define the manifold and they are the tangent vectors to each of the coordinate lines. So they're defined both on and off the curve. So the derivative of V along the curve C with respect to the variable lambda is dv d lambda, just the use of the product rule, dv alpha d lambda, that's the derivative of the components of the vector times the basis vector, plus the components of the vector times the derivative of the basis vectors themselves, because we're in curved space now, and these basis vectors change from point to point. We can use the chain rule to break down this last term here, and we recognize this term here, the partial derivative of the basis vector with respect to the coordinates x, as being given by an expansion of the basis vectors with constants, the affine connection or Christoffel symbols of the second kind or just connection coefficients gamma. This is a basic fundamental relationship for curved space because basis vectors vary from point to point in curved space. So it's a very important uh, relationship to remember. Simply commit to memory. It's necessary. So using this expression now we can rewrite the derivative as an expression involving gamma. And when we do that, we notice that we have E alpha and E nu. Now we can factorize out the basis vector because this dummy indice nu here and here can be swapped with the alpha ones here. It doesn't matter how we, what we label each, the, 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 the variable is irrelevant. So we can swap that to alpha. When we do that, we can factorize out the basis vector alpha. So our derivative can now be expressed as this expression here in the brackets times the basis vector. And this bit in the brackets here is the intrinsic or absolute derivative of the components of the vector um, along the curve that we're interested in. And the, the uh, notation for this is capital D V alpha over capital D lambda. In the case of covariant components or the dual vector components, we have this here. Uh, I won't go into that any further. So in all cases we've found how the vector V changes with respect to the parameter along the curve C. Now our parameter, as mentioned earlier, could be anything. It could be the proper time of a massive particle on some curve, x of tau. So the derivative dx mu d tau represents the fall velocity of the particle and is always tangent to the given curve. And that's what's happening uh, in all of our examples here. Let's look at the intrinsic absolute derivative of a tensor along the curve, uh, because along a given curve, sorry, because it follows the same process. The components of the tensor, second order tensor in this case, 
is parameterized in terms of the variable lambda. These are our basis vectors, the outer product of our basis vectors. The derivative of this tensor with respect to lambda along the curve is given by this expression. There's three terms in here. Uh, each of the uh, parts of this vector, the components, and each of the basis vectors in turn must be differentiated, and that's what's happened here. Again, the chain rule comes to our help, and we have here d alpha dx delta, which we recognize as this connection coefficient here. DE beta dx delta we recognize as this connection coefficient here. It all it all it only remains now to factorize out the common basis E alpha outer product with E beta. And we can do that by changing this mu to an alpha so that that mu there and that one can be swapped with this alpha and that alpha there. And that gives us mu down here. And and E alpha out here, E beta. Same thing over here, uh, we've swapped the mu here and this mu uh, for this beta and this beta here. And the end result is that we can factorize out the common basis here, E alpha outer product with E beta. Next thing, the intrinsic or absolute derivative of the components of the tensor V is given by, now this is just the intrinsic or absolute derivative of the components, this part here. As shown earlier. All right. Finally, we can express the intrinsic derivative of a vector field along some curve in the following form. So dv d alpha is the intrinsic or absolute derivative components times the basis vector. So here we are from earlier on. Again, here this first term dv alpha d lambda. Again, the chain rule comes to our aid. dv alpha dx beta can be written into times dx beta d lambda. Chain rules helped us out here to split that. We can then factorize out this common term, dx beta d lambda, take it outside along with the basis vector. And what we have inside is the covariant derivative of the components of V times the components of the tangent vector times the basis vector. And we can write that using the Dell or Nabla symbol. symbol sorry. Okay, here we go. And just going out one more. So the absolute intrinsic derivative is given by these components here. So these are the components. So this idea is really, uh, this expression here is really a generalization of the idea of the directional derivative of a vector field V of X in the direction given by the tangent vector dx beta d lambda. So how does the vector components V change in the direction of the tangent vector? That's what this is expression is saying. It's really just like the directional derivative in vector calculus, where the dot product is used to find how, how a vector changes in the direction of another given vector. Here, how does this vector change in the direction of the tangent vector? Uh, the same case applies to tensor fields as well. Again, the absolute intrinsic derivative is how the tensor changes in the direction of the tangent vector along the curve. So if we have some tensor field defined along a curve, how does it change? How does it change in the direction of the tangent to the curve? That's all this is saying.